Um, so look, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start off um, personally. Um, before I start off, I just want to uh, acknowledge that at the last uh, meeting that we had, uh, we had with us Councillor Bernie McGuinness, who is, is sadly no longer with us no more. Um, Councillor McGuinness would have played a very intricate part in, in MICA from, from its outshots back in, in 2010 and would have been one of the, the founding and first members in, in involved in this and, and would have, uh, as everyone knows, would have, have worked hard throughout the years uh, fighting the cause for, for the people here and, and firstly in his own native and his own and then in Donegal. And uh, he always played a, an important part in these meetings and, and an important part in the process um, throughout that time and, and, and up until to even just the, the, the week or two beforehand. So I just want on behalf of, of this committee to uh, acknowledge the work and the time and the effort that Bernard put into to the MICA process and to give our condolences to Jan and to all the family uh, from this committee. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we'll move to item number one. Um, consideration of the minutes held on the 11th of June 2021. Um, can I get a proposal or a second for the minutes, please? Those Councillor Doherty, seconded by Councillor Farn. Uh, excuse me, Chairman. I wish to raise a point of order concerning those minutes. Okay. Uh, if you, am, I, am I permitted? Yeah. Well, first of all, the, we, we were given an undertaking by the Mayor, Jack Murray, um, Sinn Féin, that these meetings would be streamed live to everyone, that, and the public wouldn't have to uh, look for connections from the Council directly. Secondly, those minutes are not an accurate an account of actually what happened. I can give, I can give a number of examples. Um, I propose that that meeting, for us to have meetings every single week, due to the, the issues that we're dealing with, with MICA, Pyrite and Pirate. Uh, Paddy Dever was proposed by me and seconded by Councillor Albert Doherty to become a new member of this MICA Redress Committee. Um, I raised issues of no confidence in yourself, Chair, and I now raise the same issues of no confidence in, in Albert Doherty. The, the vice chair uh, and I've wrote to both of you yesterday uh, uh, outlining my position um, which I'll deal with in due course but legal advices were sought for as well in the last meeting and we've we've received we received at the 26th of July meeting we received uh, two legal advices and an incomplete report dated the, the 16th of July on five houses purchased by Donegal County Council, which you, Chairman, the Vice Chair, and the members of the NHO Municipal District knew about this Frank, document Frank, here. Frank, so Frank, I want all Frank, those Frank. things, I want all those things that were raised in the meeting, in the minutes. Because what is in those minutes today is not an accurate account of what was actually okay. happened in that meeting. And this word goes to the point that these meetings should be streamed live so that there is an accurate account of minutes of meetings. And that's not the case. There was many yeah, issues no, concerning I'm, insurance. I'm, there was yeah. many issues concerning Cassidy, Cassidy Brothers, uh, Concrete Limited. Uh, the, the, the many issues that were raised in that meeting are not in these minutes. And I, I, want, to, I want to highlight that today to the media and to Donegal County Council officials, the, the executive. They, they are promoting digital hubs, they're promoting online meetings, and they can't even stream a meeting live, or they can't record properly the minutes okay. of, of these That's meetings. Right, Frank. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Point taken. Um, okay. Uh, Patsy, can take, will you take note of, of, of those uh, points that Frank has taken up there? Thank you. Um, we'll move on to item number two, which is an update on applications. Um, Patsy? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if I can get it up on screen.
screen here, but I'll, uh, I'll read out from what I have in front of me. Um, we can circulate this if it hasn't already been circulated. Stage one uh, applications received 459. Uh, three four, 340 of those have been approved, with 106 at further information or assessment stage. Um, stage one fees, that's the fees paid at, at, at uh, on completion of stage one. So 310 applications have had their fees paid to the value of just over 1.6 million. Uh, stage two uh, applications received 50. 30 of those have been approved. And the value of the, the approvals are, is just short of four and a half million. And uh, the remaining 20 are either being assessed or waiting for their information. Um, in the payments at stage three, uh, there's 17 uh, applications for payment received and 12 of those have been uh, approved and paid with five pending. And uh, the value of those is just short of 400,000 to date. So that's basically chair an update on the stats. Thank you, Patsy. Thanks very much. And just uh, 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 apologies for, for my ignorance, but I, I haven't welcomed our uh, Oireachtas members, uh, Deputy Joe McHugh, Deputy Eric McLaughlin, Senator Niall Blaney. I think that's the only three that are with us at the minute. I know Minister uh, McConnell will be joining us shortly. And I'm not sure if, if some of the rest of the the, the Oireachtas members will be joining uh, then as well. But uh, you're very welcome to the meeting. Thank you for for joining us this morning, guys. I'll let you on there and after we wait one number, um, I go through the, the 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 agenda here first. Um, item number three on the agenda was an update uh, from the working group, and I'm going to ask Michael Doherty to do that. And just before I do that, I want to um, thank Michael and his team and and all the guys in the working group that have worked tirelessly over the summer um, on, a, on a voluntary capacity, capacity morning, noon and night. Um, to Chairman, I don't, I don't wish to butt in. Chairman, Chairman, uh, are we not allowed questions? Document, Chairman, are we not? That, uh, that uh, they've sent to the department and I just want to acknowledge um, the work and the time and the effort that, that has been put in by, uh, by everyone. Um, and a lot of people on a voluntary capacity, and just Michael, I think it's, it's I just want to thank you for the, for the work you've done. Do you want to start there now, Michael? Thank you. Chair, Chairman, a point of order. Pat, Patsy Lafferty gave a report. Are we not allowed to ask any questions? You can ask questions when you get back in on a wee while. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Can't hear you, Michael. Can't hear you. Can you hear me there now? Yeah, you know. Yeah, let's see. Let's see why the screen's not sharing here. Okay, can you see that, guys? Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, just first of all, thanks everybody uh, for taking the time here. Um, this presentation um, is what we presented to the entire working group, which is resumed for the first time since we last met on the 27th of July. There had been several sidebar meetings, but um, not uh, an entire working group meeting. So uh, I just ask, there's about 22 slides here, so there's a fair bit in it. We made it deliberately that way because it was going uh, to be made public, and we just want to make sure that... Um, the public could take it in and understand it. So I'll, I'll pretty much read it verbatim, okay? And um, I'll take uh, questions at the end, if you don't mind, just so as uh, the um, 
the, the flow sort of runs best. Okay. Okay, so first slide, has it moved on for you there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's our final um, defective block working group position. That's basically what this document is. The document outlines the final and firm position of the Donegal family representatives on the defective blocks working group. This document is informed by extensive knowledge of the issues facing families affected by the defective block scandal in County Donegal, significant research and understanding of the defective block scheme and its inadequacies, significant concerns with the IS465 through liaison with families, local authority, Engineers Ireland and the IS465 engineers themselves. Discussions on the, of the defective blocks working group from June 21 to present, an understanding of the Pirate 213 scheme and this working afforded by expertise from the housing agency meetings chaired by John O'Connor and then Society of Chartered Surveyors um, SCSI costings for rebuilds in parallel with independent and local regional QS expertise and the data provided by Donegal County Council on existing applications to the scheme. So all of that was used as a basis for this final uh, working document. So there's nine points there in total, but the first three is what we've referred to as the three pillars. Um, the second one, people would know better as the uh, state guarantee, but there's a little bit more to it for the working group that we wanted to include there as well. Um, so underneath that, the fourth is then to test delays, uh, local authority administration, some special provisions, the actual protocol itself, the SEAI grants, and then a public inquiry at the end. So pillar one is 100% redress. So the 100% redress of all costs to fix our homes in line with the 213 uh, pyrite remediation scheme. Okay. <clears throat> and the, importantly, a transition to a 100% oversight model led by the housing agency for homeowners unable to oversee their own projects. Okay. So that would be basically taking it from the local authorities and moving it on to um, the likes of the housing agency, as was done through um, the Leinster Pyrite Scheme. Importantly, that changes the contract from the homeowner and the contractor to the state and the contractor. Okay. Um, families cannot be expected to contribute 10% or VAT. We paid this on our first bill towards the cost of fixing our homes and then retrospective payment to cover the cost of all works undertaken by homeowners up until now. There has been significant costs already incurred by homeowners where they literally had to hold their homes together because of uh, significant pieces. We've lost you, Michael. <clears throat> Michael? Michael, we've lost you. Michael? Michael? I don't think you can hear us either. No. <laughs> Michael? Is he gone? Hello? Michael, we've lost you. Here's <laughs> Michael. Martin, yes. Joe, Joe McCoo, I, I just rang him there, so he, he it, he's going to take a few minutes, but he's asked Eamon, could Eamon step in? It might take okay. a few minutes. Thanks. Okay. Is, is Michael going to share that page, or will I go look for this? Uh... Michael, can you share it, and Eamon can take it from there? <clears throat> Do you 
have it, Eamon? Do you have it yourself? You can even just read it. You don't need to put it up on screen. Yeah, okay. Um, I've got it here on my phone. So, um, apologies about this. Now, um, as Michael was saying, we're looking for retrospective payment also for... Sorry, can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, retrospective payments um, for those who have already forked out money because some have spent many thousands already trying to repair the home before this scheme actually came into place. So people are already out of a lot of pocket before coming in and being asked to pay more. Um, our rationale behind all of this, we're utilizing the SCSI calculator, as we say, on construction cost calculator. And those, um, it has allowances in there within the calculator for the mica pyrite project specific additional costs which would be the stage one costs like coring and testing the engineers and um, all those fees associated with that um, we have the provisions and reuse of fixtures um, within those provisions and reuse you know we we were asked to reuse our windows our kitchens our bathroom our doors um, but after a long discussion with the QSs and with um, with the Housing Association, um, they actually decided that the cost of them is, is negatable. However, the, the labour cost is also carried through. So we've, um, we've, we've allowed for 40% of the full cost of those things to be covered, um, which would be the labour. And that labour would be for the removal of those fixtures. Um, and the resetting of those fixtures within the new home, which would be 40%. So that cost needs to be included in there also. And then we are asked for uh, two other things, economies of scale. So the larger the house, there would be economies of scale. So we removed the 1% over, over different platforms. Um, and we also were asked about betterment. And really the scheme is not there for the betterment of homes. The scheme is really there for um, the, the replacement of homes and within the SESI calculator at the moment, the SESI calculator takes into play the existing um, NZEG regulations, which would be the treble glazing, the air to water heating, etc. So we were, we were asked to remove that betterment um, and we removed 2% for to, to cover that betterment, which is about four or 5,000 for a 2,000 square, square foot home. Um, cost inclusive of accommodation, um, where we're asking for accommodation to be included, um, engineering and lab testing costs, septic tanks where applicable, fixed fittings where damaged, um, removal of fixed fittings where reusable, uh, groundworks and utility connections to be covered also. Um, I suppose that the next page would be an important one because it actually goes to the calculator that we've worked out. Um, is Michael gone completely? No. Um, I might try and, uh, if if I can, just, I will go and find this on my Outlook. No. Um, Okay. Can everyone see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Now, sorry, I have a, I have a screen here that's covering my numbers. <laughs> um, okay. So, this is the numbers that we were looking at. Everybody okay seeing that? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so, right. We were asked by government, what is 100% and what does 100% look like? So this this is the figures that we came up with using the SESI calculator. And as I say, within here, there's the reuse of accommodation through a 60% reduction in the PC sum allocation on the SESI calculator for all those reusable items that I mentioned, the kitchen, the windows. Um, the economies of scales represented, as I mentioned, and also the betterment at 2%. Um, the scheme should be updated annually to reflect uh, April's updates to the SEI calculator. So the SEI uh, calculator automatically updates every April to reflect the, the building cost on a particular year. So it means that the scheme doesn't have to be in this linked. If it's linked to the SEI calculator, well then 
it'll be index linked from there. Um, so within the the box there itself, we have the size of the different properties in feet, square feet. Um, so 1,700, 2,000, 2,500, et cetera. And we have the true cost when put through the SCI, SCSI calculator. Now we've given it, as you can see in blocks there of 500, but the presentation that we made to the department was actually blocks of 100 square foot. So the, the full document is, is far more extensive. And we've also broken it into the five different house types, uh, detached, semi-detached, terraced, et cetera. Um, and I suppose the third column is what we looked at the scheme contribution because the Department of Housing were telling us that the existing scheme should cover everybody. But as such, the scheme, as you can see, would cover 91% of the cost of a 1,700 square foot home. But that reduces as, as homes get larger. So, you know, when you, when you get to the average size home in Donegal, which is 2,500 square, square foot, the scheme itself was actually only covering 67% of the costs of rebuilding the home. And then for the, the last column, this is uh, the percentage of um, house sizes within that category. So uh, this is information that we received from uh, Donegal County Council, thanks very much, on the 450 odd homes that already had been put through the scheme. And the percentage breakdown of that 450 homes is actually there. So as you can see, the bulk of the homes, over 50%, 54% of the homes would be included within the 2,500 and 3,000 square foot bracket. Um, and, and that's a considerable amount of money that people have been asked to dip into their pocket to try and fix. Um, and, you know, we, we needed a cap, we needed to finish somewhere. And so we, we really just capped everything at 4,000 square foot homes. And of the 459 homes that have been in, 1% of them were actually over 4,000 square foot. And, you know, the, the, we were told that the amount of footage over 4,000 square foot is nominal. Um, so, you know, we would see that 4,000 square foot would be the cap on same. And those true costs, uh, just to mention, that would be 100% of the cost. It's, it's not 90% anymore. So if the government were to cover it, that would be 100% how much it would cost to, uh, to, to rebuild all those homes. Now, as and I mentioned, I think Michael's back on there now again. All right, you there, Michael? Yeah, I'll keep going. You mustn't be able to get connected. Uh, yeah, amen. Thanks. Okay. Um, Minister O'Brien's assertion was that the existing scheme is working for the majority of affected families. And really, we just needed to point out that it's only working for 19% of the affected families. And 19% of homes would be, of, of the, that's that would be 19% of the existing homes put through the scheme. The remaining 81% would all have to contribute and contribute by the sizable sum. Um, now, within the assurances, um, we spent a lot of time working on this one over the summer and we discovered that really, from, from an assurance point of view, we would need two things. The IS465 certification is the first thing that we would require at the moment. Um, Within the pyrite scheme, there is a certification for your home within the pyrite scheme because um, in that pyrite scheme, the pyrite is totally removed from the home and the home is underpinned and it's completely fixed. So an engineer has no problem certifying under under that standard that the home is, is good for reuse. But within the MICA home right now, um, we don't have that luxury. For all options, there will be still deleterious materials left within the home. Even with option one, full demolition, we're asked to reuse our foundations and those deleterious materials may still be within the foundations of the home. Um, so backing that, we would need IS465 certifications on the home, primarily because the insurance companies and the banks will require that MICA will be cleared from the home before the home is actually reinsured to its full state and also banks will have issues lending on homes which have 
deleterious materials in them. So no certification of remediation is currently embedded within the IS465 standard, as I say, unlike the pirate from 2013. But engineers and families are gravely concerned this exposes them professionally and personally to future issues emerging within the home. This needs to be rectified as a matter of urgency to facilitate a guarantee of works completed in order that the properties can, can have insurance and future financial opportunities reinstated. The second aspect of this is that we would need some form of government guarantee. A government guarantee is mandatory, possibly in the form of a 40-year bond, inclusive of option one through five re remediation categories to cover homeowners in the event of their property experiencing future structural deterioration due to the deleterious materials within their property. A government bond accompanied by a quality certification in IS465 will help restore asset value and provide lenders and insurance companies alike the reassurance they need to engage with these homeowners. Our third pillar, of course, is property exclusions. Are you back, Michael? No? Okay. So we have um, residential properties, of course. So it's, it's a widely acceptable, accepted that uh, principal private residential property should be remediated as a priority. However, all affected properties, rental and second homes, need immediate inclusion as these properties are also housing families. Um, there is a large pressure on housing stock right now within the rental area. It's very difficult to find rental homes right now and it'll be even worse when you're, you're demolishing homes and it'll put a huge pressure on the rental market. However, if those rental, mar if those rental homes are also deteriorating, where do we send people to? The rental homes should be included um, as a matter, matter of priority within this also. Failure to include these properties will exponentially and negatively impact on an already dysfunctional rental sector, sector within the region. Donegal County Council have voiced concerns in terms of impact at their own local, local housing lists. So we also have other exclusions within there as well. Um, it was mentioned that the Department of Housing will only look after the housing side and people should go to other departments to look for help for that. However, if you're a farmer and you're looking to go to the Department of Housing to get your, your shed fixed because your shed is built with mica blocks, it is impractical to start from scratch and try and explain to the Department of Agriculture what mica is and why you need to demolish your barn. Um, so, you, you know, or if you're a business holder and you had to go to the Department of Trade and Enterprise looking to explain mica to, as a reason why you need to demolish your, your premises. You know, why start from scratch? This all should be under one one place and the Department of Housing should be that one place for everybody to go to. So those other exclusions would be the likes of commercial community and farm buildings needed to be allowed access to the scheme when residential housing has been remediated. These categories of buildings were also constructed in good faith, were bought and paid for, as well as contributing the requisite VAT receipts to the public purse. These buildings are the lifeblood of our community and are the only source of income for many affected families and must not be left behind. Post January 2020, purchases in good faith. So the scheme stopped at January 2020. If you purchased a home after that, you were excluded. However, people did actually purchase homes um, post 2020 in good faith and they should be considered under the scheme. And um, it's agreed more relevant to Mayo than Donegal uh, where awareness was higher in Donegal at the time. Many people in Mayo didn't, didn't know that they had, um, had the issue and it, they, they bought their homes post-2020. So there should be something included for them because they are Mica homes and they will need to be replaced. <clears throat> now, Sorry. Um, testing and delays. So the majority of mica pyrite victims are not in the position to gain entry to the scheme due to the prohibitive cost at stage one and stage two. Stage two is approximately 15,000 that people have to pay up um, of the defective block scheme application process. This issue needs urgent attention 
and the solution must be found where homeowners do not have to pay these exorbitant upfront costs and gain entry. Often the most disadvantaged families are left perilous. Centralization of testing locally should be implemented and overseen by the assigned public authority. An opportunity to exploit facilities at Letterkenny Institute of Technology should be given urgent consideration to expedite this testing process rather than sending them off to testing sites in the UK and the likes. Efficiencies need to be identified and agreed for testing. Semi-detached and multi-dwelling estates with an objective for, of or expediating timeframes and reducing overall costs to the state. So why should two, two separate homes that are in a semi-detached home, why do they need to go through separate testing regimes? Same also for an estate, because if, if three, four homes within an estate of 20 homes are shown to have the deleterious materials, well then it's safely assumed that the rest will probably have it too. So there's 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 some form of economy that can be made here that um, rather than people having to go through their own testings. So an approach to rebuilding multi-dwelling estates must be examined in detail, and that's something that we looked at from the Housing Authority, that they could come in en masse and, and look after this, because the issue we could have within housing estates around the county would be that we could be looking at building sites in each estate for the next 20 years because one home could get rebuilt this year and then it could be two or three homes in the estate for the next couple of years and you, children and children will just be growing up in building sites and it's it's not applicable. If we can sort out the likes of estates all in one go, this could, this could be a far better solution. Planning applications were applicable need to be afforded a fast track to approval where the existing footprint of the property remains unchanged. So people shouldn't have to go through planning permission if they're rebuilding the same home. Associated costs drafting new house plans, including planning permission fees and commencement notice fees for demolished rebuild options to be covered. Department of Housing, standard on new blocks. Families need assurances that new blocks are fit for purpose through some form of new certification process. Really, it's 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 very difficult for homeowners to, to to accept that the blocks that will be going into our new home will be will be good blocks. How do we know it's going to be good blocks? We do need some form of certification on the blocks that are going into our home. We look at uh, local authority administration, so a, a formal and detailed explanation is required with supporting evidence from Donegal County Council and Mayo County Council when a decision is taken that is not in line with the engineer's recommendation to demolish. There, there are homes that have been asked to be demolished by the IS465 engineer, but the council have rejected those claims and asked them to go back and think again. Assurance that adequately trained personnel has been planned and budgeted for by DCC, MCC and will be enhanced as demand for the scheme is ramped up. Um, a maximum time limit must be set on monitored and monitored through KPIs for each stage of the application process so that, you know, at the moment there's, there's quite a vast variation in times for people to get their application passed. Many, many months people are waiting on their applications to be passed. So if we can have some KPIs it would be a good move. The existing payment process requires streamlining into a smooth and equitable online payment process of the grant and stages. The final proposed payment of 25% puts a significant financial pressure on contractors and will discourage them from participation within the scheme. I think normally 5% is left over for the remainder of a payment for contractors. 25% is turning out to be Quite, a, quite an ask from a contractor perspective. Investigation into the administrative disparities between Mayo County Council and Donegal County Council with regards to option one of the scheme. The majority of homes in Mayo County Council would be considered an option one demolition, where there's there's quite a vast range with coming from uh, Donegal County Council. And we need to look into why there is the, a disparity between both. Traceability of blocks, implement a similar process as farm to fork. So the, the certification of the block again to clearly enable tracing of the blocks of the manufacturer. 
We've also included with some uh, special provisions within the presentation also. So homes which are condemned by an engineer and in danger of catastrophic failure should be fast-tracked through all stages of the scheme. So the worst off homes out there which engineers are putting forward should be fast-tracked um, so that we don't have any issues or don't have any um, lapses within families there. It's an important priority for vulnerable homeowners to be given for the duration of the application and remedial works process. There's many people who will have difficulty with the online application scheme and working their way through the scheme itself. It's quite a complicated and long scheme and uh, we need we, we need to have um, people within the county council that homeowners can go to, they can turn to and they can help them with their application processes. <clears throat> Provision within the scheme support services for families with special need children and adults who must vacate their homes for the duration of remedial works. This is particularly important for children on the autistic spectrum who find change very challenging. There are many children in, uh, in, in homes which have been remodified and even adults within, within the homes that have been remodified. Maybe it's a wheelchair user, Every all the lights are lower, the sinks are lower, There's, they're able to get their wheelchair under the sink. These homes are remodified for a reason, but these families trying to find a rental property to move into for the next 12, 15, 18 months, they're not available to them. And we need to find some provision that they're, they're, they're able to move into a home that's suitable for their needs. Also with children, on, children with any sort of special needs, 12, 15, 18 months is a significant amount of time in their development. And they really need homes which are which are suited towards their needs. And the, it's up to the council and the Department of Housing to find a solution of what to do here. Mental health support, walk in as well as telephone support for Mike at Pyrite Effect Families. From a Mike Action Group point of view, we, we ran a, a survey and we, we looked at the, uh, the mental health of our membership and 84% of our membership had said that their mental health had deteriorated over the period. So people do need help. They're anxious, they're depressed, they're stressed. Um, and we, we need to have some form of support for them. Special considerations should also be there for the rebuilds adjacent to existing properties where space available, saving costs for temporary accommodation. So there's some homes that would have um, land beside them uh, we, I know Joe McHugh has mentioned in the past of a family that he knows of um, that wish to build a home beside their home because their, their children have um, uh, special needs. So they need to stay within their home so that they would rebuild their new home next to where their home used to be. And at least then they can stay in their old home using the facilities that they have and that they know. There needs to be some form of leeway within the council or the Department of Housing to facilitate people who need to do this. Um, the, the issues around this, the Department of Housing has indicated approval for two, two facilitators for Donegal. However, the local authority has not progressed the recruitment of these two facilitators. Families with members who have existing mental or physical disabilities whose homes are modified to enhance their living conditions need special consideration for the living, living requirements and funding for existing mental health services should be enhanced to increase capacity significantly to cover the additional requirements associated with <coughs> MICA and Pyrite families. Are you, um, are you available again, Michael? Yeah, I'm not sure you can hear me. I'm doing my phone this time. Can yeah, you hear me there? Yeah, we can hear you, Michael, yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, again, I just got as far as uh, where uh, the special needs children and adults, yeah. Eamon, is that as far as you got there? Yeah, I'd, I'd finish that screen there. Oh, I'd finish that screen, okay. Okay, so I really apologize, guys. I'm not sure what was going on laptop wise here, but uh, that's where we were. Um, so the, the 465 protocol itself, we know we've got issues there. Um, Issues around the lack of certification, uh, government assurances and issues with foundations have already been outlined in relation to the, the 465 and necessitates a change to the protocol. Now obviously that's very different to the experience of the Leinster Pyrite scheme who did have certification. 
<clears throat> and the other thing that was very uh, relevant down there was that they left no deleterious material behind them. The entire floors were removed. Um, so it's not a case that there was a, a parallel to the retained block work. So it was easy for them to sign off on a certification, not so with ourselves, when we know that we've got latent uh, block work left behind with latent defects in it. Um, and the question is, um, you know, how does that manifest itself in time to come? <clears throat> and we don't know the answer to that without uh, full product life cycle testing. And the best we've got uh, it, at the minute and will have is point in time testing. Uh, therefore, that certification is required. The government assurances, again, we, we, we talked to, and the foundations is the other aspect of this, again, because it's a defective concrete block scheme, the foundation is not covered under it. But it makes absolutely no sense to have the exchequer spend money on a brand new house on foundations that hasn't been tested, knowing that the same aggregate was used in both. Due to the concern raised by Engineers Ireland, 465 should be adapted to include testing and, where necessary, remediation of foundation poured concrete and aggregate. Revised engineering recommendations, changing to a different remediation option during the scheme application process needs to be accommodated post stage two approval. And we got from Martin that that has actually been problematic for some homeowners at the minute, uh, and that needs to be addressed. The 465 protocol was designed to address deleterious material in County Donegal, which was primarily muscovite mica, while in County Mayo, primarily reactive pyrite. Uh, the protocol does not take into account the impact of the combination of these deleterious materials, as well as pyrotite as a deleterious material, which has also increasingly been found in the blocks of affected properties and as such undermines the remedial options outlined in the protocol. Where the local authority has changed the initial engineer submission to the scheme, there must be a resource to a recourse to an independent appeals process and escalation to the ombudsman. It is well known and has been said from the beginning, and the housing department made no apologies for it, that council, the local authority, are under pressure to um, ensure it's the least cost feasible option that's explored. But, you know, there is a conflict between that strategy and the best quality uh, remediation option for the homeowner. So there's a there's a conflict there, a conflict of interest there. And that's something that we believe where that is deemed to be overpowering and not necessarily the right call in the interest of the homeowner, then uh, there needs to be a recourse there for an independent appeals process. The grants themselves, so all homes under the scheme to be seamlessly upgraded under the SEAI grant scheme to fulfil our international obligation under the EU Paris Agreement. Um, and a, a note here as well, SEAI approval has been approved for affected homeowners in late 2020. This was not an ask of affected families during the defective block working group and is not new or as a consequence of the talks. That was listed as the number one um, give, if you like, uh, in the position paper from the officials, uh, which was very disappointing because uh, it led us to believe we were getting something uh, through these talks, which was actually there in the first place. And then there's a query out there. Um, we know the like for like, uh, house size, footprint, and so on. Yes, uh, there, there is. Uh, there's not the requirement for the 2021 building regulations, but we wanted clarity again. Is there a legal requirement to adopt 2021 building regulations where a homeowner has changed the existing footprint of their property? We know, for example, in the existing 9010 scheme, that. Um, for affordability purposes, and perhaps because of families having grown up over the the window, uh, the ten year window of, of the scandal, that um, someone went for smaller homes and would want smaller homes, and it was largely for affordability purposes as much as anything else. What they're finding is because they're having to adopt 2021 building regs, that they're actually up to the price of what it would have been to uh, restore a house of the original size that you had in the first place. So uh, we wanted to, we wanted that uh, query to be uh, addressed. The public inquiry itself. So establishment of a public inquiry into the issues of defective concrete blocks and make recommendations to the minister, inclusive of how did this happen and who is accountable? An apology for all homeowners for the devastating impact that this has had on their lives. Compensation paid to all homeowners due to anxiety, stress, mental health uh, deterioration and inconvenience caused by this crisis. And an urgent review of Donegal County Council 
Mayo County Council using the same defective block suppliers for local authority contracts, including the defective block scheme itself. And again, the rationale is living in a property which has been deemed to be of questionable structural integrity, coupled with water ingress, mould and progressively deteriorate cracking, has put immeasurable pressure and stress on families. Those accountable for this crisis need to be identified and brought to justice. Families require a state apology and compensation for the conditions they have been forced to endure for over a decade in most cases. The expert panel concluded what was the cause of the structural defects identified in Donegal. In terms of reference, its terms of reference did not address who was responsible. So the existing gaps of, there's, of which there's many, um, family representatives on the Defective Blocks Working Group uh, from Donegal and Mayo submitted a paper on the 1st of July outlining a comprehensive list of the inadequacies of the existing scheme. Bearing in mind our first meeting was on the 30th of June. 1st of July we had it all ready and, uh, and forwarded to the working group. On July the 22nd, a position paper from the Department of Housing, local government and heritage was sent to families addressing a small number of those requirements. The majority of issues raised by Donegal and Mayo family representatives on the 30, on the 1st of July has yet remained unresolved. A fully transparent document outlining the key homeowner requirements versus the final uh, position must be published following the conclusion of these talks. Um, these significant disparities have been outlined in the homeowner's position on the talks Excel spreadsheet. Now, I'm not opening that today. That's an awful lot of information on there. It uh, basically captures all the very finer detail that there'll probably be more conversations on. Uh, this was a, an overview for today's purposes. And then our um, effective block working group position. Um, Donegal family representatives have engaged in good faith with this since June of 21 to present. We have found the engagement to be continuously thwarted and stymied. Now, we did uh, ratchet that back a bit to um, being uh, quite frustrated, let's say, but it has been a very, very frustrating process and I was at every one of the meetings. The talks have not been in the spirit of trying to find a solution to the crisis for families. Instead, they have been a constant reiteration um, by the representatives that this cannot be any more uh, cost to the state. This process has been very disappointing and difficult for family representatives, as is evident from my own family reps leaving the talks. Um, it's important to remember we are all affected homeowners and our homes are collapsing around us. The state failed in its obligation to protect us as citizens through lack of effective governance and adherence to legislation that is already in place, both Irish Ledge and EU directives. We have a mandate to deliver a fair scheme for all affected homeowners. We must honour this mandate, and this remains our final position. We are happy to answer any further questions in this document. We respectfully act, ask that you proceed to submission of the final paper to Minister O'Brien uh, expediently. Families must be allowed the opportunity to rebuild their homes and their lives with immediate effect. Okay, and that and that was it. And just with regards to that final uh, document, what we want to be very clear on is the list of what is agreed. Okay, and that'll be up front. And then for anything that's not agreed, we want to have the homeowner position uh, detailed as we want it detailed. And then the officials can detail theirs accordingly as well. And that then will go to the minister and it becomes a political deal after that as to whether um, what the officials have disagreed with ourselves on remains or whether there is a political will to... Um, overrule what the, the official's stance on this was and do the right thing by the people. And that's where the politicians come in and have to weigh in very, very heavily here. Okay, so uh, apologies, a very, very uh, disrupted presentation. Eamon, thanks for carrying on there uh, without any notice. Um, but Martin, that's, that's where we're at. No, thanks. no, but uh, thank you. Just, thanks. just I, I forgot one thing, Michael. Uh, I, I brought us back to the, the page on the costings there. Because the point isn't mentioned there, it's mentioned in the larger document, but um, we were asked by the Department of Housing to remove the costs of foundations from the SESI calculator. However, we actually put them back in as yep. a result yep. of discussions with Engineers Ireland because they have issues regarding the existing foundations of homes because 
the potential is the three deleterious materials which are in the blocks more than likely is in the foundations. However, nobody is testing the foundations right now. So we've asked for the IS465 to include testing of the foundations, but we've included the costs of uh, the actual foundations within those rebuilding costs itself. Right. Yeah. Answer. And the foundations also form part of the, the guarantee that we're looking for for that very reason. As a post yeah. Okay. Again, okay. again, guys, uh, Michael, Eamon, thanks very much, and, and it's much appreciative of the time and the work and the effort that you have put on there. Um, Michael, can you take, or can that stream come back down there, please, uh, Eamon, so that I can see everyone again? Okay. So, how do I do that? Uh... Um. Also, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to invite and uh, I just see uh, uh, Minister McConnell has joined us and uh, Deputy uh, Pierre Stoherty has also joined us. These are welcome. Um, I'm going to I'm going to bring in our Rockers members and we'll give them all a couple of minutes. Just uh, if we can keep things pretty tight this morning to two three minutes max. Um, and I'm going to just let our Rockers members come in first, and then I will allow everyone to come on then with, with any questions. And I'm going to start off with. Our Minister, Minister McConnell. Thanks very much, Martin, and listen, thanks for the invitation to the meeting this morning as well, and for all the work your committee has been doing, um, and to, to all the councillors um, on the committee. And listen, uh, particularly as well, want to thank um, Eamon and Michael for the presentation this morning, and express our gratitude, and my gratitude, and everyone's gratitude to you, and to all in the Mike Action Group, and, and particularly as well, your representatives on the on the working group for the tremendous and Trojan work you've done over the over the summer in relation to drilling down and uh, getting all of the detail on this clear, um, so that basically you know uh, there's clarity around what the questions that the government needs to address are. Um, and uh, listen, certainly once the working group now has finished its work, it's over to the government, the political process then, and to ourselves as Rockus members and to the to the government to, to consider that and certainly uh, I know as, as other um, Rockus members and, and the county have made clear uh, we will be doing everything we possibly can and I as Minister will be doing everything I possibly can to deliver the asks um, from the working group and uh, the key the key issues and key objectives and particularly in terms of the 100% redress. And I might suggest in terms of the working group um, outcome on Friday last just maybe if you could have, uh, you may have done this at the start just to maybe if you could update it update us as to how you left that with the working group and just where that was left at, if there's to be further engagement with department officials, etc., or where that finished up. So um, other than that, listen, thank you very much for the, the work you've done. And um, I will look forward to, to working closely with you in the, in the days ahead now in terms of trying to get it all across the line. So thanks very much. Thanks, Charlie. Deputy McHugh. Uh, thanks, Martin. I'll keep this short like Charlie there, but just firstly <coughs> to thank you and, and the committee for passing on uh, your sympathy. I passed it on to, to Johnny there uh, for Jan and the family. And I know Bernard, as you pointed out, Martin was a was an integral uh, cog on this on this working group and dating back to twenty fourteen when he brought up Minister Coffey to a house in Isle of Doe, uh, an extensive engagement with Minister Coffey and Minister English and right through and he's been to the forefront of this, and I know his bona fides and his commitment to it were uh, there to be seen. And uh, lest we forget, and it's a, it's a Monday morning. Usually, Bernard's ringing me. I've usually about five missed calls at this stage on a on a Monday morning. But lest we forget, I'd say Bernard. He's probably linking into this room, keeping an eye on all of us. And uh, the issue that Damon mentioned there in relation to that specific case, it was Bernard. Who alerted me to that, and I'm delighted that you yourself, Eamon and Michael, in the group have included that in your presentation because it's opened the door to other cases as well. You used the example of uh, children with special needs as well, who have <clears throat> particular needs in, in the houses that they're in to date and can't just go up up uh, uh, the routes and go to a, a rented house, and then obviously the ch challenges of getting a rented house. Um, I'd like to thank the Michael Group for their engagement through August. Uh, that was really, really helpful, as Charlie pointed out, because we, we really, really got the detail of what was needed. And even today, with all the detail, detail that you've given us, there's more detail. So this 
um, gives an indication of the complexity of the whole thing. And as recently as last Friday, Eamon, just thanks for meeting both ourselves, Jimmy Cavan and myself and Minister Heather Humphreys. It just it keeps it alive. And sometimes we, we assume uh, that because the campaign is so good and effective and the campaign is effective, there's nowhere... Nobody in Ireland, no part of Ireland, hasn't heard of Micah at this stage. Uh, but Minister Humphreys put up her hand at the beginning of the meeting to say, you know, she's responsibility for three departments. Uh, that's busy in itself. So it was an opportunity for her to inform her uh, of the of, of some of the details. So that was really, really helpful. So we'll need an informed cabinet uh, collectively, you know, over the next over the next few weeks. So look, that's it. I don't want to add any more to Michael and Martin. I know you're late for time there. So let's let's hope things move forward in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Deputy McLaughlin. Uh, thanks, Martin. And uh, just to um, also acknowledge the work of, of Michael uh, and, and Eamon and to thank both of them for the presentation this morning. Um, uh, as as any of us who who know both of you uh, and your colleagues in the working group um, uh, in Donegal, um, you know it's what we would expect from you—a very comprehensive, uh, well-researched uh, document. Uh, I would endorse it 100% uh, um, because it, it deals with what's emerged on the ground, what the experience of people has been. Um, I, I think it's really important that the housing agency takes over. The implementation of the scheme at a national level takes it away from the local authorities. Um, you need this all under the one roof. Can you imagine the pressure being taken away if uh, this agency is uh, appointing the engineers, carrying out the tests, recommending what work needs to be done, hiring those contractors, organising for a rental accommodation? Um, that's the pressure, massive pressure, being taken uh, off families. Also, there absolutely needs to be a state guarantee for any works being carried out. Uh, I think that would be solving a huge problem. It also is more cost effective because if you can uh, assure people that this is a safe option and give them that guarantee, then obviously it costs less than demolishing the houses. So, so, uh, so that that's the the uh, summary. From my own perspective, I also want to say this, that the families who continue to tell their stories um, are, have won hearts and minds all across the country. So this isn't an issue now of people up in North Donegal uh, having to convince the rest of the country uh, why their homes have to be made safe and rebuilt. They've won hearts and minds across the country. You've seen that opinion poll, 71% and the Sunday Business Post in support of 100% redress. So people are decent all around the country. They understand that if you have done no wrong whatsoever, if the system in place, the regulations have utterly failed you, um, and you have no recourse, then you know you need to be uh, have your home made safe. And I, I think that the government now have all the work done for them, the presentations made, and I expect good news uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, I fully expect good news in the next few weeks um, so that's my perspective for now. Thank, thank you, Deputy McLaughlin. Deputy Pierce Doherty. Thank you, Chairperson. And like Michael, I think I'm having a bit of technical difficulties this morning, so I've just left my camera off to, to hopefully the connection will stay stable. Um, I, like the other speakers, I just want to commend Michael Aim and the whole group for the for the work that they've done. I think it's crucial that uh, as we go forward and into a, a very important time in terms of decision making, that decisions are making are made with the families of the centre. Uh, and the presentation that we've had here today is the lived experience uh, and the wealth of knowledge that has come from that uh, from the families. I think it's absolutely excellent. I don't know, Chair, if it's appropriate or whatever, but I'll take your guidance on this. But is it appropriate for this committee to to endorse um, the, the, the the ask of uh, of of the of the working group? I think it would be um, a positive signal to, to 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 finish this meeting with with that if it if it was appropriate. But as I said, I take your guidance in relation to that. I've I've just two two questions in in relation to the um, the presentation to to Michael or Eamon. In terms of the costings, and I, I think it's um, again the detail that's got into here and using the Engineers Ireland uh, and the and the costings that are that, that are there. How do they reflect with the submissions or the tender prices that have been that that, that 
that are coming in for 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 people locally are they very much aligned is the tender price is maybe a little bit over a little bit under just just interest in that because i would imagine that that's going to be um or potentially could be an issue into the the future and then the the the, the second question and final question from myself uh, chairperson is in relation to the um the, the, the scheme obviously this is going to be a multi-annual scheme has there been any discussion in uh, in the working group in relation to the type or the length of the scheme you know so su- succeeding in terms of um, achieving all of the objectives in terms of 100 percent state guaranteed many of the other issues that have been outlined in the presentation is is absolutely fantastic if we can achieve it hopefully we can um, but then the question is, is delivery of that. So has there been any question in relation to the delivery? I know in the presentation it talks about kind of fast track and some of the most, uh, the more um, serious uh, concerns in terms of uh, homes. Um, but just uh, I would like a little um, information on that. And then maybe finally, uh, Chairperson, I know it's early because it was only published on Friday, but has there been any initial any contact at all in terms of uh, initial feedback to, from uh, to to the group from the department? Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Doherty. Thank you very much, um, Michael. Do you want to just answer those couple of questions first before I before I let? Yeah. Um, That's okay, Martin. Yeah, yeah. Um, so first thing I'd say in terms of uh, Mr. McConnell's question around what's next. Um, the way it, we left the meeting was that uh, they felt they had a really good understanding um, and understood uh, it was a very comprehensive document. They need to go away and have a good look at it. That said, and we made the point, there's nothing in here that uh, we haven't talked about already from the 30th of June. So I would be extremely disappointed if they were going back to a, a first step on the ladder here. Um, and, I, and I did remind them of that. So they'll have had their conversations um, as they went along. No doubt, and they'll have a, you know, I don't think any of this is a, a, a massive shock to them, so I expect them to be well up to speed. Um, I know it's a very short window, it's two weeks. They did say that uh, they would like um, a, a meeting, or possibly two, to um, finalise some of what our ask was that's in the Excel spreadsheet. It was very detailed. I think what we have in here, um, you know, they can relate to some of the other workings in terms of. Um, kitchens, various bits and pieces. Uh, Eamon will have covered already, I'm sure, how that works in this SCSI calculator, which is a barometer and a recognised barometer throughout the country, which is why we believe what we're asking for is a very fair ask. Okay, It's based on true costs that have that has got credibility through that barometer, um, not only in the insurance industry, but also used by government already. So we think it's a very a fair position. And regards what 100% redress, we believe that there is an opportunity for government to come along and say, we have addressed 100%, 100% of what the SCSI true costs are deemed to be. And if we've got contractors then that are bogging the arm and over and above that, then they'll be exposed accordingly. And that's a different conversation. And that'll be a different part of our campaign. Um, but for right now, in this interim measure, we feel this is, you know, what would be provided here is 100% of what is seen as and recognised as reasonable costs for our area for the various home sizes, be they detached, semi-detached, rural or whatever setting. So we think it's very comprehensive. So they do want to talk to us again, which we are obviously open to. We've never turned down a meeting yet um, and we'll, we'll thrash that out. We expect that to be the level of conversation that will be happening probably this week. Okay, so that's the first question. The costs on the ground um, regards that. Well, we we believe we've talked to a few homeowners here and we've we've thrown the numbers at them, and you know they're they're saying yeah, they could probably work with that. That that would be that would be fine. We just need to see is there on any other devil in the detail which exists within the calculator that could um, you know take away from what we have here. But at face value, we think we could work with the numbers we have here. And that the vast, vast majority of homeowners would say, "Yeah, we could, we could, we could work with us." That's our sense. That's uh, based on the small straw poll we've taken. That would certainly be uh, the, the feeling. So we think that would work. We are also very aware of how costs have escalated massively, um, and that's something that we just need to be aware of. The fear is that supply and demand would drive contractor prices way north of what we're looking at here. And uh, that's something we need to be very conscious of. Hence the need to press the button on the parallel 
to this, which is uh, the state-run scheme through the housing agency. We're told it could be a year to 18 months of primary legislation to get make that happen. We say, press that button, get it underway. This is the interim measure that we would be prepared to work with because we don't want the scheme to have stopped dead in the meantime. Uh, the other question around um, the, the delivery of the revised scheme, I can't say a lot on that. Um, all I do know is that come the 30th of June, or sorry, 30th of September, our expectation is, like I said, there will be a consolidated working group document that will highlight what was agreed and anything that wasn't agreed per line item will have a homeowner position and an official's position, and then it's over to government to decide what they're going to do where, about the gaps. And that implementation strategy, we expect them to be working that in earnest over the next two weeks. Um, and the question on feedback, we didn't get very much feedback um, at, at the meeting. Um, we did get the fact that then they acknowledged the amount of work went into this. We made the point, and Eamon made it very strongly, um, you know, what we were asked to put together as homeowners was largely all the information that was available to the departments themselves, the housing department in particular. Yet we were made to go off, do the legwork, bring this back and so on. We got great cooperation with the housing agencies, uh, John O'Connor's team there um, that helped us in this. But large, you know, I would have to say it was disappointing that we were asked to go do all of this to come back again to present what it was is almost akin to, you know, um, you know, give me your watch and I'll tell you what time it is. This was all their own information, but yet we had to go through the hoops to make it happen. So we would like more feedback on what we got at our first meeting, and we'll be expecting that um, shortly, and certainly not waiting on that until the, the 30th of uh, September. I think that's the main points was raised there. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Thanks very much. Thanks, uh members for, for, for your contribution. Um, I'm going to go, go to my own members and, and the council now um, to, to, to come on with comment. And I just want to reiterate again, um, two, three minutes, if we can just keep it to that so that everybody gets a chance and we're, we're, we're not running on too long. I want to uh, ask our vice chair, Councillor Albert Hardy, first to speak. <coughs> Thank you very much, Kyra. Uh, thank you, Jack Dali, for your presentation, and uh, Eamon and Michael for the brief. Um, just have a number of questions there. One was that um, Chief Chief Executive John McLaughlin, in a in a, in a information bulletin, mentioned that a defective concrete block scheme. Um, in relation to the council does not pay the contractor, grant payment are made directly to the applicant. He mentioned um, final stage payment claim must be accompanied by a certificate of remediation. And uh, he emphasizes council cannot pay more than 75% of the approved cost before the final, final um, payment. And this is a requirement of the scheme. And, and that was met then at a meeting recently where the contractors um, highlighted the difficulties this presented for them. And um, especially they said that the 25% retainer was a disincentive for applying for these remediation. Um, time spans and Loose, loose terminology that was on some of the documents, for example, like as soon as is reasonably practical or some of these items were not acceptable. So those were little items that were being asked to be ruled in, ruled out. But I did take a word this morning from the presentations is, um, first of all, Chairman, I think before today is over, we must outline the series of meetings that we want to have um, in response to what is the outcome and also to make our, our committees more meaningful. Because another item that we heard from John McLaughlin was the limited reduced role that um, former Representative Joe had at these committee meetings. And the big, big issue is that we as well have so many tenants that are waiting with bated breath for some uh, positive response to these talks. 
I compliment the working group well done. But you've also mentioned today how cross-sectorly we've got to be involved. In education, when the child leaves the MICA home and comes to school, MICA comes with that child to the school environment. The school teacher and the SNA who left the MICA home bring that to their school environment. And the parent who has said good luck to the child going off to school lives with the MICA environment. And that's why it's important that health mental health and well-being is brought in from those departments and it's important as well that the education sector so when joe mentioned the remit of the minister there the response i believe from our eructus members is that it has to be and i'm going to mention a parallel like our fruit of the loom there's got to be a task force response with a full county of donegal and the western seaboard and i hope our committee can complement your work in the, in the Rutgers and um, Bully Boss again. And thank you, Chair. And I do thank mean that about our meetings. Thank you, Chair, for thank you. the meeting today. Thanks, uh, Councillor Darling. Um, next up is Councillor Frank McBrady. Well, thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, uh, first question I would ask. Sorry, Frank, can, Frank, can I just stop one thing? Is he any, uh, sorry, apologies, Frank. Um, uh, if anybody wants to speak, can they just put up their hand so then that I can see that, that if you click on the bottom thing and put up your hand on the screen, I can see then who's next to, to speak. All right. Thanks. Sorry. Right. The first question I have is that uh, Michael Doherty to answer why he didn't send out the reports to us when they completed it as members of the council. Secondly, I would ask them to uh, publish now the full report, not just the 22 pages that he showed us today. Secondly, I would ask him why Anne Owens and Eileen Doherty went to Wellington in the US, the state of Connecticut, to visit homes that have pyritite, and why that has not been disclosed by the Make Action Group. Now, I want answers, and I'm going to get answers, and I, I'm conducting investigations at the minute, which are not concluded, and when, when I have them finished, I will publish them, Chairman, and you're part of those investigations, uh, and, and your counterpart, Councillor Albert Doherty are part of those investigations. Um, Councillor Albert Doherty has claimed that he made an FOI, which he didn't make, um, concerning issues concerning the five homes in Bunkrana. And I would ask him now to publish his FOI that he claims that he, that he, that he uh, uh, has uh, requested from Donegal County Council. But not only that, Joe McHugh sits in here today, along with the Make Action Group. Joe McHugh delivered this scheme and has hid behind the Make Action Group since, since this unworkable, unjust 90-10, which is a 60-40 scheme, was established by him and Michael Ring. They delivered it. But I can tell, I'm, I'm giving this message to Joe McHugh because he's ignored my letters and he's ignored my phone calls. You won't be able to ignore us when we put you into the High Court box to be cross-examined on what you delivered to the people of Donegal, which has failed me my father, and every victim of this maker. Now, the inner circle of 100% redress did not want the people that are on this working group to be on it. And the reasons, and in my opinion, the reasons that they shouldn't be on it is because you're all politically affiliated. And the issue here is that what was wanted by the inner circle of 100% redress was a lawyer, a chartered surveyor, a chartered accountant, a cost accountant, uh, uh, professional people, a geologist, uh, professional people that know what they're doing and professional people who know how to deal with the sharks of the civil servants that you have been dealing with for the last three months. The issue here is every single thing that Michael Doherty and Eamon Jackson mentioned here today, I have already mentioned that in our council meetings along with other members. We have had motions passed for public inquiries. We have 100% passed by every member of Donegal County Council and that document that they read out today does not cover 100% compensation for everything that's happened to us. Where's the psychiatrist reports? Where's the councillors reports and the people's mental health effects? Because I can learn you a few things about preparing psychiatric reports for the High Court if you like because I've, I've dealt with tribunals of inquiries, I've dealt with High Court cases and, and a scandal uh, uh, now not as big as this scandal. And the facts are that the five TDs here today 
endorse this 90-10 scheme, which is a 60-40 scheme. And they use this, this issue of what has happened to the victims of MICA, Pyrite and Pyrotite as a political football. But not only that, the MICA Action Group, Joe McHugh deliberately, along with Engineers Ireland and the NSAI, the National uh, uh, Authority, uh, the NSAI, deliberately left out of IS465 the word purity. It doesn't cover purity. It doesn't cover puritite and foundations, and it doesn't cover puritite and the blocks. Not only that, this meeting today has been overtaken by this working group. We have far more important things to debate concerning the issues that are not being debated today instead of debating this report, which is another can kick and exercise down the road for the minister. It'll take Route 66 when it hits the minister's desk. And God knows where it'll land and where it'll come back and what year it'll come back. Because the Eructus members will tell you this eventually has to go back to the Shannon and then back to the back to the doll to be endorsed. I don't see can can these people that bullshitted us today tell us that, that the minister is going to tell us on the 30th of September that we're going to get a hundred percent of everything? Are we going to get a hundred percent compensation? Well I can tell you this now, Joe. You better listen to this and you better tell your colleagues in government that you're going to you're going to give us 100% redress when we take the multiple cases in the High Court like we did against the guards. And I can yeah. guarantee this. I can okay. guarantee this, Chairman. They're not going to get away with kicking this can round like a football. And not only that, Albert Doherty, I'm asking you now, Albert Doherty, why did you tell okay. Catherine McGinty why did you tell Catherine McGinty you made an FOA okay, on a report, on an incomplete report dated the 16th of July, which you already had, which you quoted from? I've made 37 time, time FOAs, time. Chairman. Time. I've made 37 time. FOAs, Chairman. And yeah. I, I, I already have the information on those 37 FOAs, but I need them on official channels. Ask Patsy Lafferty why he's refused to hand over uh, certain documents that I, I have requested. On, uh, now, now what, 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 one point, I have one point to make. One, one, one point to make, Podrick, I'm no Backstreet time. Gangster, Podrick. Do you hear me? Tell okay. Sinn Féin and your War Council, I'm no Backstreet Gangster. Uh, Councillor Paul Canning. Welcome, um, Eamon and Michael. And, um, one thing that I, I'm wondering, um, it's, not, it's not on the document, um, and it's something that I know the question has been asked in relation to building regulations, etc., and today's building regulations and all of that. Has a conversation been had with the EPA, the, the Environmental Protection Agency, because um, new houses of today, uh, as po population equivalent, that the dictates your septic tank and percolation area. So has all of that been, been looked at in relation in relation to the to the prices, because it will be a situation, and the fact that you've mentioned septic tanks within the blocks as well, the the the, the EPA will have their regulations, and they've they've done a new document in March 2021 20, of this year as well. So the standards of the EPA have upped uh, substantially. So I'm just wondering, uh, has that been looked at, or is there anybody looking at it as as we speak? Because I think it could come back to bite us, maybe further down the line when, when we are trying to um, take cross our T's and dot our I's. But other than that, um, again, great work and, and, and I'll be supportive of anything you, you, you do. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Thanks, Councillor Canning. Uh, Councillor Jerry McMonagall. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Eamon and Michael for a very comprehensive uh, presentation. I think it uh, clearly outlines the, the ask now that's needed to be met by the, the government. And I we commend uh, them and, and the, the working group for all the work that they have been doing and are doing. And wish them well with their uh, negotiations and deliberations with the, the government. Uh, certainly, I think that's something that we have been presented today is fully support. Uh, we have in the past uh, at the Council called for and, and unanimously supported the 100% redress for the affected families and the homeowners. And uh, I, I, I don't see any change in that from, from the members. So well done and, and uh, keep up the good work. 
there's been a number of points raised in, uh, in relation to uh, the, the, some of the stuff that was addressed within the, the presentation, especially around the health and well-being of those families and, and affected homeowners. Uh, and it's something we need to keep an eye on and, and fully support the, the working group on and do whatever we can and in whatever committees we're on and commend Councillor Albert Doherty for his uh, work in relation to the Regional Health Forum and, and trying to get the HSE to uh, address and, and, and support those families in any way and every way they can. Uh, I was a wee bit uh, disappointed with uh, our council in relation to some of the, the, the presentation in relation to recruitment and, and our actually days of approach to this. Uh, we've been told a number of months ago that the council was involved in our recruitment process and were trying to facilitate in every way they could the, the application process. And, and, and so I, I would like to hear from the council uh, what is the problem there and, and what point is that at? I would also uh, like to ask the council in relation to very well made, and we've been as councillors raising this with council locally about the the refurbishment and, 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 and the fixing of these homes and if we can't have families living in uh, building sites for years uh, and we need to have multiple approaches and multiple houses being uh, fixed at the same time. We can't go in is what is happening now, that one house at a time seems to be getting fixed in an estate. Uh, we certainly see it, I see it here in Letterkenny, if you drive in and out of the States, there's scaffold now being up regularly and over this last couple of years since the, the scheme opened up. And uh, that, you know, we can't be living in building sites all the time. So I would like to hear the councils, uh, what their plans are to address these situations, uh, and particularly in the social housing, but where, where we are in relation to the issues we raised around temporary accommodation, uh, have sites been identified? Has the plan, uh, planning regulations, are, are they going to be eased to allow this to happen? So I'd like to hear from the council that. Uh, I'd just like to ask to the Michael group, you know, uh, because uh, if ever is a deal accepted and, and there is uh, a ceiling on the cost, that have you met with the industry in relation to the contractors and ensure that contractors, there won't be any rogues, that they won't put the, uh, the prices up through the roof uh, uh, because of demand? And just uh, has there been any discussion with the, the, the building industry in relation to that or the... the, the the availability of, of, of enough contractors. And so I'll leave it at that there, Chair. Uh, thank you. And, and, yeah, just to commend the, the working group and uh, thank them for the presentation today. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Liam Blaney. Thanks, Chair. And uh, Chair, I'd like to thank, first of all, the um, representatives of the, of the working group, uh, Michael and Eamon. For the report to put forward here today to us, and uh, that a lot of us councillors do not agree with the language you was used to describe the report a short time ago there. And uh, obviously, there's been a lot of work into it, and we have only seen part of it. I'd like to thank them for that. Um, when the 90, scheme, 90 10 scheme was announced, um, I publicly, on a meeting in Lufford, uh, gave my reservations to. An 90 10 scheme been announced, and, and nobody had seen a smaller punt. And as it turned out, the smaller punt turned out to be a, a lot worse than what we anticipated it might have been. And um, hopefully, this group has learned from that, had reservations about this group, but on a second time, the same representatives come back on a second time representing us. But from what we've seen so far, I think they've made a, a good job of, of, uh, of trying to get the homeowners the best they can for um, for the, the, the homes that's affected in the county. Something that, something that was uh, our, that was raised at one of our meetings, uh, and I know John Gallagher came back in with a positive response at the time. I don't hear no mention of it since. And there's the, the chance of a self-build. And maybe there's an explanation of why that was not taken on board since. Uh, I raised it before, but at the time I did get a very positive response from John, and maybe we get a response back again. But I do believe that... Uh, as was already said here already by the representatives of the Bike Action Group, that the contractors, getting the, the, the number of contractors on, on supply and demand, and I believe that demand is going to be 
a lot bigger than supply, and it's going to it's going to increase prices. And um, I think if we could get a self build where there's registered contractors, be it builders, blasters, um, electricians, plumbers, whatever it may be, that the homeowner could some way rather rather than the contractor sign off or whatever that's been on and maybe we get some kind of explanation as to maybe if it can run, if it's a runner, if it's not a runner. Um, it was mentioned there about engineers and um, the disparity and, and, the, and the recommendations made by, by the engineer and, the, and what the council um, come up with. But I honestly believe that the engineers take, need to take a bit more responsibility here. Because engineers, in some cases, is putting in uh, recommendations that there's no, there's no scientific or physical evidence of what is required to meet whichever option that they go on for. And I know in some cases where the homeowner says to the engineer that they want such and such an option, and that the engineers put in that option, whether the evidence is there or not. And then they turn around and then and blame the council for it. You know, there's a lot of anger out there. Naturally, as human beings, we want to blame somebody for for the problems that, that we have in our homes. And I think the council was an easy an easy option there, especially when the engineers are blaming the council for throwing back applications or looking for further information applications or not agreeing what the recommendations done by the engineers. But when the evidence is not there, the council has no option. And uh, I think if, if engineers would work a bit more responsibly, it would help to um, help to maybe make the scheme work a wee bit more, uh, a wee bit better than actually what it is working. Or the new scheme, I should say, um, was the nine to ten scheme is, is not working for most people. Um, was has been a number of homeowners that replaced their, their outer leaves, or maybe their outer and inner leaves. And there is a myth out there, my belief, is that if your inner leaf does not get wet, you don't have to replace it. I don't believe that to be the case. Because with internal walls, not inner leaf of her walls, we have internal walls that are cracking that never get wet. So my own opinion is, at this stage, and we're a lot further down the line than we were whenever the 9 to 10 scheme was arranged, but my own opinion is if the house is making, the house should be demolished. And there is people out there who don't want their house demolished. But if you don't demolish today, in my opinion, you will be demolished on some other day again. And I think as well that the engineers, this scheme was fairly well set up for them. They were involved in the setting up of it. They're getting fairly well paid, in my opinion, as well. I think they should be helping the applicant or the homeowner to make the full application to the council rather than to leave it to do their share of it and to leave the, the, the homeowner to do the last part of it. And a lot of homeowners aren't going to listen to do it, as really has been stated. And I think the engineers should be helping everybody out. And where the homeowner is capable of doing themselves at the moment, but if they're not, they should be they should be helping out the homeowners to not able to do it. Um, like all something, like something comes up, like this that comes up new, there's always, always down the line, new cases that will come on board. And I think the department has to leave it, has to allow to leave it open, this scheme open to some new things that will arise it, and but nobody here was going to think of it over here, so I think it's very important that when someone new does come up, that um, that the department should be left leaving the, the door slightly ajar to try and accommodate uh, this, whatever situation does arise. And finally, and you know, this is not the end of the Make Action Group. It shouldn't be the end of Make Action Group. I know the last time when they when they said they, when they announced that the multi-million euro scheme for the county and someone was standing down, I don't think it should be the end of it. I do think that if the, the Action Group is going to be required by a lot of people who are not time to come yet. But I think that the Make Action Group should be representative, and I said this from day one, and it should be representative, more representative of the of the different areas of the county. 
It all seems to be, or mostly seems to be, an issue. Most people believe it's an issue problem. That's going to be, and as I said from day one, a lot of councils here will stand up and say, I'm saying, I've said it from day one that I believe that the Larry Kenny Malford area is going to be a bigger problem, if not bigger, than an issue. But because most people believe it's not a shown problem, and most people believe it's a one supplier problem, that is not the case. There's numbers of players out there, as can be, I'm quite sure some of the staff from the county council can hear today and say, yes, we've had applications and problems with houses, defective materials that come from more, from more than one source. And I think maybe it's important that that would be said. Because there's people out there who's cracks in the houses. I didn't get the blocks from such and such a company that's just named most of the time. And therefore, I don't have Micah. And that, that's just a myth that's out there too, unfortunately. Thanks. And, and I think, if, as well as being more representative, I think they should have subcommittees set up on each elected area chair. Okay. Um, so that the, the problems can be, I think the people will talk to somebody lo more local that they would know better <laughs> if they have problems rather than to they'll, they'll bury their head in the sand if it's somebody they don't know. So thanks for the time, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I watched the uh, football. Thanks. Councillor Martin Farn. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Ian, guys, just remember the time scales here because we, uh, we have to try yeah. and get there's other meetings as to happen. Thank you. My chief of police. My chief of police. Um, can you hear me then, Chair? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you see me? I'm echo then. I just first of all want to thank the working group and uh, Michael Doherty and Pete for the presentation of the Dungeon from the Sword. They were asked by the, by the department, um, is it Michael? Is it Michael? Is it Michael? Is it Michael? You're on two devices. You're on two devices there, Martin. No. Uh, okay, I'll have to look at the I'll take the one. All right. Uh, Basically, um, I want to say that I mean, there are just members of every team. And Michael King's presentation, he finished off by saying uh, that basically they have done as much as they can do over the positions. And my own perspective, and I said this at our meetings, we as county councillors can do as much as we possibly can on the position that we have. But we need our five Iraqis members doing everything that we possibly can to move this on as quickly as possible. They talk of uh, the impact that this is actually having on families, their mental health, and so on and so forth. I think what we need to see at the end of this month is a 100% regress. And that is that is in a lot of of our crowd, take away a lot of distress from families, and that can be enough. That can be enough. I would have heard the minister there speaking on television over the weekend about uh, that Mike and I had identified another company, and this would all have to be looked at in a bigger scale. I didn't like those comments because I think this would be kicking the can further down the road, and I don't see it to happen. This working group. The Mike Action Group, they have done tremendous work. They've done everything that has been asked of. And it certainly is in the moment to our petitions, especially our Rockets members. And I want to see them going into the Minister's office and not asking them, but telling them, we want 100% regress for the, for the people of Donegal because they would not accept anything less. And that has to happen sooner rather than later. I, I, I think you know, this means we can talk and we can have meetings here and we can fight among ourselves, but that's not achieving anything. We have to go as a, as, as a, as a one unit. Uh, Donegal, we have to keep it as low as 100% because that's what people want and that's what they have to get. I, uh, so uh, I'm not going to say much more here, but one, one, I, want to, I want to ask uh, Patsy, Patsy Lafferty here. We would have brought up our, our meetings about only got the council identifying sites where rubble can be can be dumped uh, in the north of the Jordan, south of the Jordan. And uh, is there anything to in that? 
and of the husbands that need to be moved on to clean. In other words, some people that have to demolish their house here in North and Joan should have a site in North and Joan that they can take that stuff to. Um, look, Chair, I want to thank you for the for sharing the meeting here today and doing an excellent job. But it's not that soon we get the opportunity to have our lot of members listening to us. So I, would, I want them to get this 100% redress for the people of any children and Billy Gaw and make it happen now super loud. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farn. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Jimmy Kavanagh. Thanks very much, Chair. Yeah, I'll, I'll be brief here. Most, most things have been said by now and said well. So uh, I just want to thank, thank Emma and, and um, Michael for their, their presentation this morning and just to fully support everything that they have uh, in that presentation and everything that there was, every detail of the submission they have made. Um, I, I just want as well just uh, some, say something to what, what uh, Martin Farron has just said there. Um, the power uh, around us is not with us; it's, it's, it's with the it's with the the, the dial. Uh, so it's important that that our Rockers members make sure that their cabinet colleagues and their the different ministers around the country are, are fully appreciative of of the uh, the situation around Mecca and how serious it is. Uh, Joe McHugh pointed out there we uh, Heather Humphreys met with the. Uh, with them and, and uh, myself and Joe on Friday, and uh, you know I think uh, you know she has a lot in her plate and all the rest, but I think she's got her eyes open just to, around the seriousness of the whole problem. So I think I think it's important that we don't take it for granted that TDs and ministers and so on in other parts of the country know just how bad this is and how much this 100 percent redress and and the other aspects, the mental health aspects, and all those. Um, uh, problems around uh, around uh, disabled children, people with disabilities, and so on. All those things have to be addressed, and it's important that, that everyone knows just what what they're dealing with here. And uh, you know, there's only one there's only one solution, and that solution is is what their elected members and uh, and they'll learn, and uh, they have to make the decision. And you know, sooner or later they're going to have to bite the bullet and do this. So it would be much better if it was sooner. So I hope that in the next couple of weeks. That we're getting back good news on this, and uh, again, well done to everybody involved in putting that uh, presentation together because it's uh, excellent work. And uh, I know uh, you're saying you're, uh, Michael was saying that they're doing work that maybe should have been done otherwise, but I think it's good that everybody's aware that the Make Action Group know exactly where this is at, uh, and it's good that you have compiled the report, and it's good that uh, you know. I think government and everybody else uh, are well aware now that uh, you, the, the, you can't have the wall pulled over your eyes on it. So I think that's good. So I wish you well with it. And uh, most of all, I wish you success with it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Um, I think, is that all the members have spoken now? Um, just a, a couple of things. We had two other uh, issues on the agenda with the contractors issue, insurance issues, and, and that has sort of been been taken care of as part of what Michael and the working group have discussed there and some people have, have brought those points um, as well. I just want to also acknowledge Councillor Doherty as well and, and a very important issue that you, that you raised um, and I heard you on, on, on radio this morning in relation to the mental health and I think that is a very important issue and it's, 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 as you said yourself, it's disappointing that um, that HSE is not uh, taking that as a national or the at the forum level that you, you're taking it up at, but I just want to acknowledge uh, you taking that up because I think it's a very, very important um, important thing to, to take up at the minute. Um, Patsy or John, is there a couple of things there that you want to maybe um, give an answer on? Uh, I know Councillor Blaney had a couple yep. of questions there that maybe you could, could answer those couple of questions on. Thank you. Okay. Um, just to touch on a few points, uh, members, um, in relation to liaison staff, uh, we're, we're conscious of the potential changes that may be announced 
a number of weeks in relation to the scheme and how that will impact on uh, what staff and resources we need to put in. So there, there's an element of, of um, sort of waiting to see what happens in that regard. But uh, f for now, the existing staff have been dealing with, with, with queries and uh, we'll, we'll monitor that and we'll, we'll deal with it as whatever changes are announced uh, uh, over the next period uh, and follow that through in whatever the appropriate manner is. Um, in relation to the social houses that have been uh, raised, would accept that the, the submission has taken longer for us to, to complete uh, and we had intended to have it submitted by now. Um, the current position and I suppose it's noteworthy that some of the some of the points that were made in the, the presentation, the homeowners presentation, in relation to some issues was sort of part of part of the thoughts that we've been developing ourselves in relation to the social houses, in relation to um, taking a state wide approaches and so forth, as opposed to a number of houses at a time. So that, that those types of, of issues, as we've been discussing them internally, have resulted in probably the submission taking a bit longer before we finalise it. But essentially, it's at final draft stage, and I would expect that to be made within the next uh, week or so. Um, and obviously, that will include a range of uh, issues that we need to address for social houses in relation to technical assessment, liaison with tenants, and um, finding alternative accommodation arrangements, whether that's off-site or whether that's that's on-site, temporary accommodation on-site, that, that, that needs to be, I suppose, finalised as part of our, our submission. Uh, so we'll acknowledge that members would have expected that, and indeed, I would have expected it to go before now, um, but it's, it's imminent. In relation to liaison staff, um, sorry, I've dealt with that. In relation to a uh, number of other items there in relation to the disposal of, of, of rubble and self-build, I think, were two items. John, would you be able to maybe uh, comment on those, please? I'm conscious that our Environment College are, are, have done some work on the, the disposal of, of rubble and there may be some information on the website. Our Environment colleagues would have, would have looked at this and, and there are a number of permitted uh, hauliers to transport uh, waste and, and there are also a number of licensed facilities uh, in the county that can accept the waste. So I think if any homeowner or engineer is looking for information on this, uh, our own website in addition to uh, the, the, the Environment Office would be able to, to assist there in trying to identify the closest uh, location where this material can be properly disposed of. So uh, that, that information is there uh, presently, so uh, the Environment Office in particular uh, will be able to assist to assist there if there's any queries on that. So I suppose, Patsy, that's the, that's the situation regarding uh, material moving off site and whether it's a house being demolished or whether it's blocks or whatever there there, there is there are, there are facilities in place for that sorry to you. And john can i just uh, make a point on that was was there not a discussion um whatever right in saying that this come up uh, at an initial meeting uh, and i brought it up myself actually at an initial meeting and it was brought up um, by other my fellow councillors at, at, at other meetings, was the council themselves not to look into or try to find out could there be an area, um, let it be old quarries or whatever it would be, it would be that rubble could be taken to, um, to to take down the cost because it is a substantial cost when you bring an outside um, contact contractor and to take away um, the rubble. Um, there was a discussion at council on this, and there was uh, the environment and the environmental section of the council was to look into was there an area that could be used, um, likes of an any shown, likes of the Larry Kenny lights, maybe in a certain order in that area, um, that could be used. So I'm not sure there's anything we've done on that, Pat or John, but it certainly was a question that came up uh, before. I Chairman, if I, Chairman, if I can just excuse myself at this point. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be thanks, Minister, and thanks for your time for coming to the meeting today. No 
Thanks again to the group Thanks and also again. just to acknowledge the, the work of the County Council staff over the last period of time as well and the massive workload that this has been for all of them. So thanks very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, tell you, you. your colleagues in government, we'll see them in the High Court. Yeah, Martin, Martin, I just want to come in there and back up with what you're, what you're saying about the... Uh, I thought it was agreed that we would sort of identify sites uh, in development of the, you know, so far. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Martin. I think that we'd have to agree that. Yeah. John, do you want to comment on that, John? Yeah, yeah thanks, Chair. Uh, that's been looked at in parallel, uh, Chairman and, and members as well. The, the identification and, and usage of sites will have to be, uh, or has to be appropriately assessed, and again, have to be licensed as well. Our environment colleagues are looking at that at the minute, so can they come up with appropriate sites for that? But they, they did want to stress that there were options available uh, with with sites that are are licensed at the moment to be able to deal with it, but I, I take your point that it was raised before. But it's something that environment is also looking at on, on some council owned property that could facilitate this issue. There was another question come up there on the EPA and the septic tanks. Is that what is the situation with that? Is that you, Councillor uh, Canning? Ask that. Yeah, Councillor. Sorry. Can, I was, and, and I wonder, uh, has the working group um, brought it onto their document in any way? Okay, well, Michael, will Michael give us a, 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 a poll. We'll take Michael back on in a few minutes, all right, thank you. Um, a quick point, Frank, you want to make a quick, quick point? Uh, yeah, Chairman, I, I presume because of this meeting today, I was expecting to be able to answer, ask questions of the staff, Patsy Lafferty and, and, and yeah. uh, John Gallagher in particular. Is that going to happen? Yeah, I, well, you you were you were you were already on, and, and if you want. No, no, but what do you call it? There's two other items on the agenda, and you agreed yeah. the agenda at the special really? policy committee, um, which they have no remit. I didn't within agree this committee. Well, you agreed that you agreed the time and date for this meeting. Um, I'm not. I'm not listening to any of this well, crap no more. Um, well, ch chair, uh, chairman, I, I'm entitled to ask yeah. questions. Uh, that's okay, and I'll let you on when I'm ready to let you on. Thank you. Um. Blinney, Councillor Blinney, did you want to make a, a point there on what John said there? No, sorry, I must put you on John said what I said on, on um, the self built situation. But just finally, uh, Chair, I'd like to be associated with what was said earlier on about Baron and Yannis. Um, as well as that, I think uh, it's, it's important to acknowledge the role that Joe Peoples has played in this committee since its formation. And thank you for the work he done. And thank uh, the rest of staff, which has been working under under difficult uh, environment and changed environment this last while, but thank you for staff for the work they've done and much patch the best of, of luck with it all these done. Thanks, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Michael, there was a few questions there um, that came on. Do you want to just give a quick synopsis of any of those? Yeah, well, okay, so maybe one of them regards the EPA and the septic tanks. Uh, the septic tanks were not, were not even included, um, and it was the official position that it should not be included. And uh, that in that uh, document that they provided us with um, towards the end of July. So we have gone back on that. We haven't specifically talked, uh, we haven't specifically talked regarding the EPA end of it, uh, Paul, but we, we can certainly talk about that as well. well I, what I would say is uh, we have worked it off the SESI calculator. That was deemed to be, as I say, the appropriate barometer. The EPA part, um, we can certainly include and ensure that there's nothing hidden or lurking there that uh, may put additional cost to the homeowner that was unforeseen. So we'll, we'll certainly incorporate that. Um, not sure that there were many of the others here. Um, anything in particular, Mark, that you wanted me to come back on? No. Um, uh, think... Chair, Chairman, he didn't answer the question about the trip to Connecticut. He needs to put that into the public domain. What were they doing out in Connecticut? And why they didn't disclose the fact they were out investigating purity? Now, I'm, I'm asking the question. Michael Doherty's on this committee to answer questions from us, the members. Tell us now why Anne owns and Eileen Doherty went to Connecticut to look at homes with purity and why it's not an IS465 and why they didn't raise it publicly and why they took down a snapshot of it 
on their on their Facebook page at the time. Now explain, Michael, for the public to understand what kind of cover up is actually going on here. I'm asking you, Chair, to ask him. Thank you. Right, go ahead, Martin. Uh, Martin, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, Eileen and Anne were invited out by a lady, Debbie McCoy, uh, to talk at a conference um, on the experience of MICA in Donegal. They didn't go out to investigate anything. They were invited out there and they went out and they talked to that conference and they gave an overview of what was going on from a MICA perspective there. While they were out they there, also visited they were, a home out there. Are, are, you, are you going to you going to let me answer go ahead, or not? Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. So, really, what what they did then while they were out there, they were out for a few days, and um, they were taken around to be shown as well what was going on in the experience out there. And it was largely to do with basements, and it was to do with poured concrete. Um, at that point in time, there was no real concerns on our side because of the the uh, Newton strength of our port foundations compared to our blocks. The blocks was really what all the conversations were centred around. What has come out in more recent times through some of the engineers was the issue of pyrotite. We raised that then at our meetings with um, the housing agency and actually made contact with um, the people that the ladies had got to know out there, Debbie McCoy and so on, and the university that was involved so that they could provide more input to the housing agency on it, because even the housing agency itself seemed to be not just up to speed with all of the stuff to do with pyrotite. That has been a relatively recent development in terms of what it's uh, profiling around our defective concrete block scheme. And for that reason, we brought it forward then to the housing agency accordingly. And we have, we believe, included the risks associated with that in the fact that we are now asking for the state back guarantee to not just be with the remedial options two to five, but also the options one, which is a complete demolition, because like we said in the presentation, it makes no sense to not have founds tested and then go ahead and build an entire new structure on top. So we believe we have it adequately covered uh, from that regard. Ch chairman, I don't accept Thank that you. answer, Chairman. I don't accept that answer. First of all, Sean Hegarty, Adrian Sheridan and Martin Doherty, a very experienced charter engineer, has had tests done on foundations. Plus, my father's report from Petrolab shows that he has high levels of purity in these blocks, which are more than likely in the foundations. So I don't accept that. What I do accept is that, that the inner circle of 100% redress have done a pile of work that you are now trying to take credit of. And the facts are, I hope that Sean Higgerty and Adrian Sheridan and, and Martin Doherty, a very experienced Sheridan engineer, comes out and exposes what you are trying to take credit for now. The facts are, you have known from day one about the problems with Puritite and you've decided not to talk about it. The fact is, Anne Owens and Eileen Doherty went to the US in October 2019 and didn't disclose it publicly that they had visited homes with purity. That's the issue here. And what do you tell you? What do you tell you this now, Michael? Respect, no, with all due respect, Chairman, Michael Doherty is misleading the public. He's misleading the public, and you're supporting him. Excuse that house me, he visited, the, the, the Doherty house he visited. Um, you can mute me all you want, Chairman, but, but you won't keep me quiet. Right you won't. Right well, right you won't keep um, me quiet. You won't keep me quiet. Right. That's fine. That's fine. You can't throw accusations. Well, I'm, I'm telling you now, I've investigated this. I, I've investigated Debbie. I've investigated the visit to Debbie McCoy. And I've visited... I, I've, Chairman, would you, need to, no, you need to understand the investigation that I've conducted. They went out to America. And who paid for it? Ask Michael Doherty who paid for it. Why, why they went out there, junket in America, and ended up down in Wellington. I want to know. I want to know from the Mike Action Group that are supposed to be representing me and all the other victims. Right, no, I no, Chairman, know. I want him to answer the question. Give right. Michael Doherty to answer the question. Um, okay. There, well, I'm just there's there's one other item on the agenda here that is it's item number four, and uh, I think it has been well uh, raised already by by most of the members here. Uh, it's the contractors' issues. Um, Councillor Doherty, you 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 have already raised that, and and when you were speaking there, and and. Michael and your team, you have that 
um, taken into consideration in, uh, as part of the working group. And the insurance issues is something that's, that's very high on your agenda in, rely, in relation to the working group, in relation to what discussions you have had with um, the department to date. Um, Counselor Doherty, do you want to come on there? Sorry, Martin. Um, Martin if I, sorry, Martin. If I could just for a second, uh, just well, well, something I just want to remind everybody: the people that are being referred to here in the Mike Action Group, myself included, are all affected homeowners. I think that's the first thing that people need to remember. There is why? Why would we sell our own homes short? Our own families, our own neighbours, our own community short with anything underhanded or anything that would be. Uh, counterproductive to the goal of fixing everybody's home. So I think I just want everybody, despite all the mad accusations and everything that may be going on around there, just understand we have skin in the game ourselves at a personal level, over and above all the hours we're putting in on behalf of everybody else. And uh, I think that just, I just, we don't normally go looking for any credit or anything else. But I think in the face of some of the stuff that's been thrown about there, it's important that that okay. that is noted. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Thanks Sir Doherty. Uh, Chairman, I can back up everything I've said. Remember that. And remember what yeah. you all say carefully. Because I can back up every single thing that I've said and what I've investigated. The 37 FOAs will tell the story. Yeah. I already have the information, but I need the FOAs. And, and Councillor Doherty, who's the expert in FOAs, maybe he'll explain them. Thanks, Sir Doherty. to the meeting about um, Councillor Blaney has mentioned there were many issues uh, asked about the register for own build at that meeting um, there was reservations about the, um, the lack of a time ceiling and I mentioned the language before they thought it was too loose and also towards the end the role, relevance or significance of SEAI in the whole uh, um, issue is also mentioned, and um, perhaps Michael Lehman might want to respond, or the council officials. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. John, do you want to comment on that, or does Michael want to comment on that? Um, Michael, John, you're muted. Sorry, Sorry uh, my, my, my connection dropped there. Martin, I, I just I missed the question. Michael, Michael, I mentioned that at the contractor's issue, the whole item of register for self, sorry, for own build or self own build was mentioned. Again, the reservations about the time ceiling, and some mentioned payment within 28 days. Uh, the relevance. Uh, importance or otherwise of SEAI um, also was mentioned by Mr. President. Yes, with regards to the SEAI, um, like, like we said, um, we did look to see, we understand, and it was, um, it was referenced the fact that uh, there needed to be SEAI approved contractors, not necessarily for the entire job, but for the uh, um, aspects of the job associated with the SEI um, requirements and compliances. So that, that was with regard to that. With regards to the self-build, it's one that we have asked about um, from the beginning. With regards to concrete answers on that, uh, we, we, we were led to believe that it wasn't something that they necessarily saw as um, um, out, out, outside the realms of possibility, but it would require certain sign-offs um, in order for the job to be seen as uh, comprehensively done and uh, done properly. So that would require the contractor sign-off. It would require the um, engineers sign-off and, where appropriate, an architect sign-off as well. Maybe John Gallagher can come back in and tell us if there's anything inaccurate in all of that. No, oh, Chairman, that's 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 absolutely fine. The scheme, as it sits at the moment, requires a sign off from the contractor and separately from the engineer. Uh, 
and I no doubt that, that that'll be discussed as well at, at, at Michael's level in terms of the, the working group there. But uh, I think I mean, you, the, the, there's options there to resolve that. It'll link back to sign off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, John, and thanks, uh, Michael, for that. Um, is there is there anything else, guys? I'm, I'm conscious that it's now after eleven, and, and I know that John um, and uh, has to attend another meeting, and I know Patsy has to attend another meeting, and I know there's a number of people to attend other meetings. Chairman, um, ch- chairman, the, the insurance issue. I mean, I, I I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, first of yeah. first of all, chairman, um, we got a we got a legal report here. Does here we got a legal opinion. From Paddy McMullen concerning insur- and insurance is in this legal opinion, and Cassidy's uh, made a statement publicly. We have always adhered rigidly to the standards set down by government. We had a full on-site lab. We completed the required tests, which were independently audited regularly, and our masonry blocks always met all the standards mm-hmm. at point of manufacture. Now, C.S. Kelly, on behalf of Cassidy's, sent a letter to twenty victims. To their solicitor with Micah, stating they had no insurance. Right? First of all, Cassidy's are insured as a public company, as, as a limited company, you must have tax clearance certificate on a yearly basis. That's the rules. So, Donegal County Council are covering up for Cassidy's and are still today buying products off of Cassidy's. And they're hiding behind their legal opinion which has no grounds. Now, this legal opinion here, a ruling in the Supreme Court overruling the Appeal Court, uh, Irish Supreme Court provides clarity on statute of limitations and and a property damage claim. Overruled the High Court and overruled the Appeal Court, the Supreme Court. There's no statute of limitations concerning the defective materials that have been sold or bought by Donegal County Council and sold by Cassidy's, or any other manufacturer. And Donegal County Council deliberately hid behind their legal advice, which has gone into the dust because you adjourned the meeting because you were frightened because I was going to cross-examine Paddy McMullen on his legal advice. And you've deliberately put it into the wind. But listen to me, I haven't forgot about it. But the next issue I want to talk about is money for misery. And the meeting you've had down in Burt is money for misery. He's more interested in contractors and what, what, what contractors are not getting. At 200 euro per square foot, and that's what they're going to be charging and maybe more when they go into this scheme properly. You're more interested in their rates than the rates of the people who have mica and pyritite in their properties. It's evident that the, the big Fianna Fáil, Finn Gael and Sinn Féin contractors now are being protected by... Councillor Albert Doherty, Councillor Martin McDermott and the Mayor Jack Murray. Because the most important thing to me is every victim who owns a property, not just a home, they're the people's important to me, not contractors. Okay. The, gotcha. the bottom line, no, no, I'm not finished, Chairman, I'm not finished. I have one more point, I have one more point to make concerning, concerning uh, Patsy Lafferty. Right, on the 23rd of February, before that date, 2021, I want to know all the correspondence that Dr. Ambrose McCluskey and other chartered engineers sent to you and the redress scheme administration section of Donegal County Council. Now publish it in the public domain so that the public know that these engineers have been raising the concerns and their position right. on the fact... Right. Right. No, no. What do you call? Yeah, I thought that this meeting today you know was to raise you know, these questions. No, no, we haven't heard all this. No, we haven't heard all this because they've denied me. Patsy Lafferty has denied me an FOA. Thank you, Frank. No, Um, there's no thank you, Frank. I want to to ask Patsy Lafferty why he's denied me the information on an FOA. Answer the question because I've got the information. But answer the question why you've denied me the information on an FOA. And why you're trying to... You have no political privilege and you have no legal privilege. That's the law on it. Okay. Um, you can you can mute me all you want, Chairman. But what do you tell you? This is going to end up in a tribunal, and I hope you can stand over. I hope you can stand over what you've been covering up. I hope you can stand over what you've been covering up. I can tell you here now. Excuse you, me. You're the big boy that. that now you've been you've been covering up. 
I have covered up Pat well, Rennie. Well, why, why did Patsy Lafferty then? Why did Patsy Lafferty? Why did Why did Patsy Lafferty write out a letter for you to send to Dr. McCluskey? Could you not write the letter yourself? Excuse me. Could you not write the letter yourself, Chairman? Could you not write the letter yourself? Were you not able to write the letter yourself, Chairman? Answer the question. Why did Patsy Lafferty on Why did Patsy Lafferty on the eighth of, of March write a letter for you to go to Dr. Guys, we're going to I'm going to suspend this meeting now because I'm No, you're suspending the meeting because you're hiding behind you're hiding behind your party and you're protecting your party. I Chairman, you can't hide. No Chairman, you can't hide, and the vice chair can't hide as well. Both of you knew about the information. Both of you knew about the information, and you didn't disclose it to us as members, and you didn't disclose it to the public. So publish, publish everything now that you've been covering up. Excuse me, I was sent. It. I, I, you were not I sent a private letter. Doctor McCluskey told me it was not a private letter. He he told me to my face that it wasn't a private letter. So sure what do you call? I am a hundred percent sure about it. I am a hundred percent sure about it. And you saying you're sure of that? Hand over your phone records. Why, why, why you were ringing certain people on the day you got the letter? Hand over your phone records. Why? Hand over your phone records. Why? Hand over your phone uh, records, Chairman. Why you were phoning people that day you got the letter? Tell the truth. Tell now. Tell now the public. Tell now the public. Because I'll get your phone. I'll get your phone records. Like I did the guards' phone records. I'll get your phone records. That's okay. Get them. Hi. Um. Uh. Guys. Uh, just going back to to to, to the, the the most important things here, and that's the homeowners, because we're being absolutely taken off track by by absolute nonsense. Um, no, the paper the paper tells the story. It's not nonsense. The paper tells the story. There's, there's a few. No, things, chairman, uh, it's not nonsense. Uh, Frank, chairman, it's not nonsense. The paper tells Frank, the story. Frank, you're nowhere for anybody to hide Frank, when I'm finished with this. Frank, Frank, there's no one here. None of us that are not trying to do our best for the homeowners. And uh, for a lot longer, for, since this time last year, we've been we've been trying to get this scheme up and running. Is this scheme perfect? No, it's not. Absolutely not perfect. There's lots of people putting on hours and hours and hours of work to try to help the homeowners, to try to help people, to try to get this scheme running, to try to get a scheme that fix houses for people in Donegal, fix houses for everyone who's going through an absolute nightmare as all every one of us included we're all in the same boat every one of us so why would anyone want to, to to disengage from that or do anything out of that it's totally wrong and 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 just let me finish here now i want i uh, in relation to the document that that that, that uh, they have put forward um uh pierce Doherty, uh put forward, a, put forward a point to ask would we endorse that document um is is the members of this group uh, happy to endorse that document. Before you come in there, pardon me. Sorry, sorry, uh, Deputy McLaughlin. Sorry, Deputy McLaughlin. Yeah, no, th thanks, Martin. I, I just want to clarify, this is a public meeting, th this meeting here now? Yeah, it is a public it, meeting. It, it yeah. is, because uh, there, are, there are journalists yeah. present. Uh, uh, okay, well, okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to be clear that, that this is a public meeting and everything that's been said at this meeting uh, can be yeah. analysed. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I, the well, other point don't, was... Don't, don't worry, Patrick, I'll analyse everything for you. Don't worry, my lawyers are looking at everything, especially what your party's been saying about me. And in right. committee, and committee, Podrick, where they didn't have the balls to say it in the public arena. All right, you want to find No, that? no, no, no. Let Podrick say what he has to say. I'm interested to hear. I'm interested to hear that. I'm interested right, to hear the boss to... behind Sinn Féin and Donegal what he's got to say about his party attacking me and my family. Come on, Podrick, you seen the letter I sent to Albert? You should have read it by now. Have you any comments on that? All right. The night that Richie Barnes was killed and you covered up your your colleague. Your colleague went back to jail the next day right, and wouldn't make a statement yeah, yeah, to the guard. Do you want to have a, have you a comment I'm, for that, Podrick? Have you a comment, have you, have you a comment right, for that, Podrick? I'm, I'm, I'm interested to, to hear, Podrick, if you've got a comment. Councillor Doherty, are you happy enough? Just to hear that. Yeah, yeah. You, you were you were about to put to the meeting if they would support this document. I yes. think it would be important to get that's that's what this meeting is about today. Uh, yeah. It's about getting yeah. the support of all political representatives in Donegal yes. behind the tremendous the tremendous campaigners who have worked diligently to try and get a solution for their families. That's what this meeting is about today. So just ask that that's the way we'd end the meeting on a positive absolutely, note. Absolutely, absolutely, and thanks. Uh, 
uh, Deputy McLaughlin. I think it's important that, that we do that and it's important that we put our best foot forward here for Donegal and, uh, you know, not be uh, trying to uh, go in different directions. We, we ha The group, again, has done fantastic work. I want to acknowledge also the work that uh, the Director of Service, Joe People, has done over the years for the group and wish him well in his retirement. Um, but I do want, uh, and everybody's happy enough to endorse uh, the the working group and endorse the document that the working group has put forward. And I just want to make sure that everyone is, is happy with that. Uh, to, to, the chairman, uh, chairman, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not happy right. with the chairman. I'm not happy no, with it. Fine. I have one route. They don't represent me or my family or my friends or, or people I represent. I, re I represent them with our legal team. And there's one route, and Padraig, listen to this. There's one route that we're going, and that's the high court. And people better waken up to the... Um, oh, chairman, let me finish. I'm not, and they better waken up to the fact that we're going I'm that route. Speaking. I'm speaking. Uh, well, I was speaking. I'm, I'm speaking. Well, you what do you call it? That I'm working speaking. group does not represent me or my family. Um, no, yes. did I make myself clear, Chairman? They don't represent yes, me. That, yes, that's fine, but I'm speaking Okay, now. they don't represent me. That's okay. Eamon, you wanted to make a comment there? Yeah, thanks, Martin. Um... I suppose just on behalf of the working group and uh, the Mike Action Group, I'd like to thank most of the comments that's come through this morning. It's been it's been incredibly positive on the work that's been carried on, and I can tell you there, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that's been working on this document, um, both legal and uh, and qualified from a structural point of view. Um, is that the I Green Party, Deirdre and Flown? Is it? Is that the Green Party, Deirdre and Flown? The, the, the academic is not an experienced barrister. Is that who you're talking about? No, no, no. Name the people who he's talking about. Name the people who... Na, name these experts that he's talking about. The Green Party representing you. Is that what the uh, government party representing the, 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 the Make Action Group? Tell us about it. Now, come on. Come on, Eamon. Tell us about Deirdre Naflone and your conversations with her, who's an academic. A Green Party councillor in Santa... A Green Party councillor in Santa Fort. Uh, Eamon, do you want to find there? Yeah, I just want to address some of the things that's come up. Um, I know Albert mentioned the limited, reduced role at the meetings, the working group meetings. I, I think it's it's even more so now because Joe People has has retired. He's put a lot of work in, and um, really, it's it's imperative that Donegal County Council get a representative back onto the working group as as quickly as possible to represent the public housing within Donegal because we had a meeting there last Friday and there was no representative from Donegal County Council so somebody needs to be in there to replace them. Um, also it was mentioned, um, the Councillor Blaney mentioned that uh, it's the, the same reps are in as last time. But let me tell you that the last time that we got a scheme we had no input into that scheme. This, this was dished to us. We did not negotiate anything to do with that scheme. First time we seen the scheme was in June 2020 when the scheme was released, and that's when we saw the pitfalls. So, you know, there, there was no reps represented at, in, in the making of that scheme first time round. This time round, the reps have been represented. We've made our voice known, and you, you've all seen the results of that voice this morning. And that's the, that's the, the, the paper and the position that we're putting forward for hopefully a new scheme. And I mean, just I know we're focusing quite a lot on the existing scheme and, you know, the costings that we're putting in and the caps, etc. And yes, contractors will probably throw the hand in when they'll throw the arm in when they realize that there, there's extra money available. But we, we had to work with the existing scheme with caps, etc. And this is the best thing that we could come out with, because ultimately where we want to be is with the housing association looking after this or the likes. If a housing association comes in, well, then that is a true 100% scheme because all the all the costs are covered um, by government and government is negotiating the co with contractors. It's not the individual person who's negotiating with the contractor and all that hassle is taken away from homeowners. So certainly with our Eroptus representatives that are here, the important thing from us is, is to get moving on the legislation that's needed for the housing association or the likes to come in and take over this issue so that homeowners all they have to do is hand over a set of keys be told where their accommodation is for the next 12 to 15 months and then come back to the homes that they love that they built um also just to mention um 
end of mag you mentioned Liam, um when when two of our when three of our representatives stood down last time in mag they wanted to close mag but the rest of us realized no hang on there will there will always be a need for a mag until the last home is fixed in Donegal, there is a need for a mag and we plan to be here and to fight for the residents of Donegal, as we have done for the past eight years, and Mag will stay. And yes, I personally, I mean, Councillor Blaney, you're my local uh, councillor. So I've been fighting from Milford for the past eight years, and I've been telling the people in Inishon, it is not an Inishon problem. It is a far bigger problem than Letter Kenny, but Letter Kenny is asleep. People have buried their head in the sands, and it was only when Paddy Diver came out, that suddenly people in, in Letterkenny realised, oh, hang on a second, my house is cracking too. And suddenly Letterkenny are on board with that now. I've delivered leaflets around Port Salon and Milford, and the estates in Milford are rotting away with Micah. It's all over them. Um, so we're, we're fully aware that it's not an initial problem. Uh, don't, don't forget Lefford and Sterard, hey. Where I live. You want to see yeah. my house? Do you want to see my father's house? Karen you forget? Hey, what I tell you, Karen Morta lives 500 yards across the fields from me, so don't tell me. Uh, I advise. No, hold on a minute. I advise Karen Morta what to do in 2014. Did I not? Did I, did I not? Did I not, Eamon? Did I not yeah. advise I Karen Morta and his family? Really, thanks for your help, Councillor Blaney. And yes, if you want to set up a local representative, a local committee, Win in either Milford or Port Salon for, for Micah, I'll certainly help you do that. And I'm willing to do that. But thanks everybody for their comments. And just, just to finish off, some of the stuff that's been thrown at Michael Doherty there this evening or this morning, it's not on. Michael Michael Doherty is an effective homeowner who has put time and work, probably far more than anybody else within Mag, into this campaign and you know, to hear what was sla what was thrown at him this morning is is totally disproportionate because he's sitting here to answer a question about two people that left Mag a couple of years ago, and you know their trip to the USA was nothing got to do with Mag. It was not funded by Mag, and you know it was it was it wasn't even brought to the Mag committee. They just went. There was no vote within MAG to say, well, okay, who's the representatives of Mike Action Group going wherever? We just discovered that they were going. And it were they not nothing. were they not part of the Make Action Group at that time? And nothing Were they not back. part of the Make Action Group? No, were they not part of that Make Action Group at that time? They were part well, of the Well then Mike what are you Action talking about then? Stop spinning. Because hey, you're becoming a very good politician. You're spinning. You're spinning out of control. Even, hey, um, don't don't keep and, hey, don't keep muting me. Councillor McDermott, because, because he right? Speaking, Don't you right? keep muting me? Well, somebody has to, somebody has to debate what he, what he's trying to spin in the public domain, and what he call it? The quicker the better. These meetings get back into the chamber, the better. Yeah. So you can't mute That's anybody. Right. This is a democratic country. The muting that you're at today is unreal. And what I tell you, you'll not yeah. shut me up, Councillor McDermott. I, do. I told him. I told you a long time ago that I don't Sorry. take prisoners in wars. I don't Hold take on. prisoners in wars. Excuse me, Frank. And did I tell you that? I told you that a number of weeks ago, that I don't take prisoners. When I'm fighting for justice, nobody gets in my way. And you may laugh, Councillor McMoneagle, the orchestra player. You may you may laugh at me, but I'm telling you something now. You'll not be laughing by the time I'm finished exposing this. Because I'm good at, what I'm good at is investigating people. And Podrick knows that. And I know, what, Podrick, do you want me to bring out all the stuff now in the public domain? Do you want me to bring it out now? Do you want me to bring out what Albert Fullerton gave to me? Do you want me to bring it out, Padraig? Um, Do you want me to bring it out now in the public yeah, domain? I'm going, to, I'm going to finish up here now. I just want to leave on a note. Padraig, have you an answer to that, Padraig? You're sitting there laughing along with your colleague. You're, you're sitting there laughing along with your colleague, Jerry Mack. The, hey, the heavy endorsed. guy. Hey. Yeah, the Dust Committee has endorsed um, the working group's uh, document. I think that's a very important step for, for our committee. And it's just disappointing that we're not more involved in it, but we're not. And uh, I just wanted to, to, to put that out there that, that we as a committee endorse this. Andrew Blaney, do you want to make a quick point? Because I am going to pull the plug on this meeting here now. Uh, don't blame you. Uh, just very, very quickly. 
Um, all, all I was saying was that the 9 to 10 scheme was recommended to the public without the Make Action Group knowing the finer detail. And that's all I was saying. And Eamon, Eamon clarified that. They said they didn't see it until June 2020. It was recommended a couple of years before that by the Make Action Group. Look, we all learn by our, by our mistakes, hopefully. Most of us do. Some will, but most of us do. And uh, as far as setting up a Make Action Group, I, I think that they should be set up locally in each election area or a municipal district, a, a subcommittee that feeds into the main committee. I'm not looking to set nothing personal for myself at all. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to work with anybody and everybody. I've been fighting this fight for eight years myself. And I never once, I don't think, once spoke to you. So you are a local person to me. I never once have contact from you. Um, but like a lot of other people who have been fighting this, I'm chatting with the Mulford Lecter and Larry Kenny Lecter. Like it's Mark McDermott, Jennifer kind of Firm, many, many a time. And uh, I will continue to do so until, until we get what is required for all the homeowners. But thanks for that work by yourself and me today. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Liam and Patsy, maybe we could. Um, uh, put that note to the agendas of the of the MD meetings. Um, what Liam has proposed there that it could be discussed at each MD about setting up um, sort of a small working group in each each municipal district that could feed into to this committee. Okay. Okay. Chairman, Chairman, Podrick, tell us about all the the Republicans that were convicted by Frederick Morris and that you you kept quiet about. Guys, no, no, Padraig, tell us. Right. Tell us about all the arms fines that were planted on thanks. your Republican comrades. Thanks. Tell thanks us now. For, thanks for, for, for coming today. Thanks to your Octa's members. You know answer if you know answer for it, Padraig. You know answer for it. Thanks to your Octa's members. Hey, for just you're team. part of the establishment now, so you don't want to talk about it. Thanks for taking your time out of your busy schedules, guys, um, especially the Octa's members this morning, and to ourselves. Now, there, I, I wanted to put a date in the diary uh, for another meeting. Um, for uh, an, an October time, say how does the how does the 18th of October, Monday the 18th of October, um, how does that suit, Chairman? And can the can the can the media be all notified this time, Chairman? Because they're not getting notification of these meetings and they're not being given the links. But I'd also request that this meeting be held in the chamber the next time. Yeah, well, hopefully by that stage we will yeah. possibly be back in the chamber, yeah. Martin. Yes, thanks very much, Can I suggest, can I suggest we do, if, if there's going to be uh, a response from the government at the end of this month, Yeah. Could we, we have that, that meeting, could we have that meeting a bit earlier than that in yeah, October? That, that's what I was going to, to, to say. We would provisionally put down the 18th, Jerry, but if there's a response from the government, we will have an emergency meeting then directly after that response to discuss. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Yeah. All right. And we can liaise with yourselves then for a day. Yeah, it would be important to have the, 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 the working group's opinion on, on what's Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do. You. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, guys. Look, thanks again. Thanks for everybody for the time. Have a good day, Padraig. Have a good day. Just to, just to reiterate, we're, we're all... Uh, you know, working extremely hard to try and get this situation um, sorted for the people of Donegal, and it's it's a terrible situation everybody's in. And I, again, I want to acknowledge the time, the work, and the effort has went on all over the summer uh, by the working group to get a document together, uh, a fantastic document that is at least with now with the department and on the minister's desk. Hopefully, it will be very very shortly, and hopefully, we will have an outcome come the end of September. Again, thanks for every example and thanks for this time. Thank you. Thank you.